I supposed yes, to put Mr. the headphones on or I just ignore them? It's your choice. I do not want to look like Princess Leia. Oh, those aren't mine. Mine were the Princess Leia ones. Oh, uh, help us, Obi Wan. Let me just open up to the. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm not Googling. I should not be singing the Google song. 350. 350. It's not going to be assholes are killing your project? No. Okay, I see. I've got it. At, at 350. So at 350, we've got a lot of really interesting stuff coming up. Just follow the Microsoft. Um, we people. will not be streaming assholes are killing your project, but I've heard that there's a lot of good buzz around that one. We might get some B-roll. We might get some B-roll of that. I think we should because yeah. people are very excited about that. <laughs> it's actually been suggested to me that I attend that session. Okay. Uh, because oh, of, of the assholes oh, oh. that are killing my project in the chat room, not the ones today. But enough about assholes. No, we're going to, so at 3.50, we're going to stop interviewing for a while, and we're going to go to the advanced Git tutorial, Not Your Average VCS. So if you're on stream. So if you're on stream, you can see that. And right now, we're joined by Chris O'Rourke. Chris, where can we find you on Twitter and the Internet? I am at Chris O'Rourke, which I will just do this. So you can see because it's mm -hmm. C H R I S O R O U R K E. No apostrophe. No apostrophe. Not in the Twitter feed anyway. As well as uh, I, I also function every Friday from three to five as at No Filter Friday, spelled exactly how it sounds. Did you change that because it got to be a little bit too much to handle in your own Twitter stream? Um, no, actually, I, I I drift between the the two, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of people were joining in and a few people over the last eight months of the, the experiment had uh, tried to start it on other days and said, you know, this is our idea, we came up with it, and then they're like, oh, I actually used search and found out that in Oops. fact, we didn't come up with it. But uh, the No Filter Friday account, uh, I usually use to retweet really, really great nuggets and chestnuts of snarky yet poignant uh, social commentary, as well as to uh, give people information on what the rules are and where you can find the website, which is really, really difficult. It's just no filter no Friday. Friday. All right, so let's first start with why are you why are you here? What are you doing here, man? Well, um, I, I really believe in open source. I've been a huge open source aficionado since um, I got into computers and didn't have any money to buy software. So how long have you been doing open source? I've been using open source since 1995, so a while. Yeah. Everything from... Uh, You're in the, were you here for the keynote? Unfortunately, I was not. Selena had some excellent numbers, and I cannot recall them exactly, but the percentages of people and how long they had been using open source was impressive, and I think it was just under 50% had been using it for... I would almost argue, depending on the size and scope of the project, I mean, there's there's probably a much greater number. I mean, technically speaking, you could anybody who uses GTalk, like Google Chat, technically speaking, is using uh, XMPP. So I mean, there's Jabber users. WordPress is open source, isn't it? WordPress is definitely open source. I am a occasional plugin developer and bug tester. Mostly, I just complain a lot about things that break because I do weird things when I code. So. Interesting. Okay, so you wanted to talk about Slate Technologies and what is Open Slate. We covered that a little bit, but wanted to get a little deeper into it for us. Um, basically, uh, Slate Technologies, my company, um, were, were built on the being both uh, everyone has the capability that works at Slate to uh, actually function as a CTO and help companies do technology forecasting. So translate CTO. Uh, Chief Technology Officer. Thank you. Um, we're, we're kind of uh, technology board members for hire. Mm -hmm. We we do uh, five-year rolling technology plans for forecasting. Like you know, you guys have this much growth. You're going to need five more servers. We really recommend you go with you know Debian because while Ubuntu does serve the purpose, there are some tools that will help you better. And we try to keep everybody as as focused on open source, but we're really really strong believers in. Uh, the right tool for the right job. And a lot of other managed service providers, which is the main crux of revenue streams for us right now is, is acting as people's IT departments. But um, most managed service providers in the Portland area say, oh, we're a Microsoft house, or we're a Linux house, or we're a Mac house. And it's like, you know, that's fantastic. You can run your own business exactly how you want. But when you're trying to help people, it should be what they need, not what you want them to get and what makes you the biggest profit. So 
And that's kind of where the infrastructure in a box concept first came from. There's a huge variety of different tools that a new business or an existing business can either buy or get. And we thought, you know, we'll just have a really nice admin screen that ties them all together. Mm -hmm. But as Elizabeth said earlier, when projects are forked or they make major code changes, API hooks just get thrown out. And it's like, do we really want to be in the habit of constantly rewriting our all-encompassing administration tool for these other tools instead of giving people easier features and better abilities to do what they need to do, which is run their business. Mm -hmm. So we decided to just throw away everybody else's software and make a core six module all-in-one solution and then have everything after that be extensible through additional modules and API hooks. So uh, 10, 15, did we say? 14 years open source led you to making a, an honest effort at making things open source. It, you know, like you said, the right tool for the right job. Is that why you're volunteering at the Open Source Bridge? Uh, yes, actually, uh, was uh, we decided about a month ago that uh, in addition to, since Open, we're actually partnering with uh, FreeGeek mm -hmm. for OpenSlate. That's uh, okay, all of their, uh, as soon as we actually have it finished, um, <laughs> all of their uh, nonprofit hardware disbursements will come with, like they, everything comes with uh, Ubuntu server. If they get servers, then workstations come with regular Ubuntu. But uh, they'll also get a DVD that has, for their server, ready to go, open slate. Very cool. Yep. And we were also pledged as a company to give uh, one hour of free workstation and two hours of free server time to help new businesses and nonprofits that go through FreeGeek get their network set up. So, that is very, very cool. But uh, there's a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of, you know, geeks volunteering to help nonprofits going on around these parts, making me a little happy. It's the way it should be. And I think as, as much as people are like, oh, you know, Portland's that weird hippie town where everybody rides bicycles, and it's like, oh, no. <laughs> it's uh, how, how horrible we are. But, you know, it's, it's the more everyone helps each other, the better off everyone is. Yeah. Be it financially or spiritually without going too far into the spiritualism. I saw a ghost once, but it turned out it was just an unfocused camera. Um, oh. Yeah. I know. But uh, no, the, the, after using open source and also being Microsoft certified and formerly Cisco certified, uh, working for Microsoft directly, Apple, Intel, it's like, it, it's really easy. The more experience you get working with like high level enterprise environments, you see, well, here's what works for them because they have an unending budget. How do you get rid of those budgetary concerns but still serve the same purpose? Yeah. And, you know, we aspire to, to hit the canonical level or Apple level of adoption, maybe even the Microsoft level, but uh, mostly we just want to help people. And, and, you know, everyone at the office, we all love helping people and we love being proud of our technology. Very so. Cool. What is the thing that you're most looking forward to here at the OS Bridge Conference? Well, actually, the uh, unconferencey stuff. Friday. I'm, I'm, I can't wait for Friday because... Such a Portland boy. <laughs> it's, it's strange. You're the, you're the first person who said that, though. There's, there's a lot of really great speakers. I'm, I'm sad I missed JP's. Mm -hmm. I, I had uh, baby health issues keeping me from getting here when I wanted to. But uh, it seems that their there's structure is fantastic. But the ability to spitball ideas and, and get elbow deep in new ideas is something that's hands down the best thing about the whole unconference ID. Yeah. So. And I think that uh, I think uh, when I was talking with we had Audrey and Selena on the show and we talked about that and they just really wanted to introduce the unconference environment to people who aren't uh, native to it. I mean, to me, it seems like oh yeah, that's a G. You go and you have your conference, you make it up as you go along. It just seems foreign to me to have everything scheduled from the moment you walk in. I like the two days of scheduled uh, content. I think it's fantastic because those are ideas that really do need to be heard. But I'm glad they added the, the unconference day. I always thought if you're too structured in, in being a speaker, I, I spoke years ago at a conference and 
I went in with a very structuralized idea. This is, they, they told me, you know, these are the people who are coming to this. This is how, this is the kind of thing we'd like it if you could cover. Mm -hmm. And I had this super polished, almost uh, marketing demo speech put together. And I walked in and it was the complete opposite crowd. And I was like, the first five minutes, I was watching everyone start to go to sleep. And I was just like, forget this. Let's just talk. I'd tear up my card as an example, but then I'd get in trouble. All right, well, uh, one more thing we're going to talk about. There's a drum corps show on July 3rd. Yes, I have to say, um, especially, it's, it has wide-ranging uh, open source correlations. I mean, the, the Drum and Bugle Corps activity started back as kind of an offshoot of uh, junior American Legion VFW, where it was very structuralized, very regimented, and didn't have anything artistic really about it. It was just play music, do it exactly this way. Do as you are told. And the scoring system, yeah, the scoring system was very closed source. It was, you started with 100 points, and every time the judge recognized anybody in the group make a mistake, you lose a tenth of a point. And about the 70s, everyone got really sick of that, and they said, let's just make this an independent, total, standalone ruling body with our own sets of rules and we will do things artistic su subjective judging and the activity exploded and I mean there's thousands of people that have uh, done it because you can only do it between the ages of 14 and 21 and uh, totally independent of schools churches yep and it's really hot but <laughs> For the, the ten and a half minute field show that mm -hmm. the, the, the groups tour around the country with, when she, most groups do about 14,000 miles in eight weeks, they, uh, for each minute of showtime, they rehearse about 55 hours total. Right now, uh, the Seattle Cascades Drum and Bugle Corps, of which I am an um, alumnus, I can talk well, uh, they uh, are back after having a, a year off but uh, for reorganization due to the recession. But uh, yeah, they, uh, they just started all days, which are uh, everybody, all the kids get up, they're staying at a high school. They get up at seven in the morning and start rehearsing at eight. Do they like sleep in the gym or something? Yes, actually they do. Girls on the one side, boys on the other. And uh, I see yeah. that toe on the other side of the line. You get back over there. That involves push-ups and working the kitchen, which is misery when you're in the deep south, because they also travel with a converted semi-trailer kitchen. But uh, there's about 134 kids marching in the Cascades, and that's pretty much the world-class core size. And uh, they're rehearsing about 11 hours a day, seven days a week in preparation for the big tour. But at Hillsborough Stadium on July 3rd, there will be a big show. Um, the actual, my hat is also from my favorite drum corps, which is the Santa Clara Vanguard. Very cool. But, uh, and you know, there's actually uh, Santa Clara Vanguard has uh, three members who sit on uh, the upper levels of Adobe's management structure. And they're very big into pushing things like air and the other things that they're not completely open source, but they are made publicly available for free. Very cool. And, uh, yeah. All right, so what time? On the, uh, the show starts at 6, but there will be groups rehearsing and uh, out in the parking lot warm-ups okay. about 3. All right. Chris, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to come here. Thank you. Where, where can we find you again on Twitter and on the web? I am at Chris O'Rourke, C-H-R-I-S-O-R-O-U-R-K-E. And I can be found on the web at uh, slatetechpdx.com or nofilterfriday.com. Excellent. Thank you so much. Don't Thank forget you. to sign the guest board.